I was lucky in that the very first show that I played at the Apollo, the very first time I was on the stage in the band, this is what happened to me. I get recommended by the woman from Sesame Street. She says, oh, this kid is amazing. He can do anything. He can read whatever you put in front of him, blah, 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 blah. So I go and I do the audition. And the audition was Betty Wright's cleanup woman, which is in F sharp. And it's like 30 pages long. I mean, not 30, but at least 15 or 16 pages. You have to have like three music stands and tape them together and keep pulling that shit up you know, the other side. And, uh, and it's just vamping. do 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 but of course, I play because I didn't understand the R and B thing yet. Quite, I didn't have it down. But you get the chart, and they go, "All right, come on, here we go, two, three. and we're jamming this. And uh, so he, the the leader of the band, tells me I don't have to make the rest of the audition because wow, that was so incredible. You played Clean Up Woman for thirteen pages, so you're the man. So they let me go. And I just go walking around Harlem, and they tell me to be back an hour before showtime because at, at, at the Apollo, I don't know if they still do this. You guys play it. Do they still go, the half is in? Do they still do that anymore? No, they don't do that? All right, that's real old school. But they used to go, the half is in. It was like this diving klaxon. The half is in. The half is in. And we'd all like run around and get ready to play. So I'm, I'm sitting first chair because it's like a couple of guitar players. I'm sitting there. And... Uh, what happened, you know, we're ready to go on stage and I'm so focused because I want to really, I want to do a great job because I know this is the Apollo. I got to smoke. I don't want to lose this job. I'm getting $375 a week plus, you know, like, yeah, I need to do this. So anyway, I didn't pay attention that they had rolled a coffin in, you know, a casket, a coffin on the side of the stage, like almost right in front of me because I'm sitting here looking at the conductor and this coffin comes over. And I'm looking at my man, and he goes, bang. And as soon as he does that, curtain opens, and this coffin opens, and it's Screaming Jay Hawkins. I don't know if you've ever seen his routine, <laughs> but Screaming Jay has got this looking like a skeleton, and it's got this rattle in his hand. And I, I'm terrified because it just happens at the exact moment, like on the downbeat. Bam, and we're like playing in 6 8, dun, 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 and then we go. Dun, we got the pickup go dun, 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 pop, ah! and I jump up and I grab my guitar like this. I grab the cab cable out and I'm running around with this big jazz guitar running across the stage and screaming is running after me. <laughs> and I'm running and I run stage right, but now it's like they're blocking me because all the people waiting to go on and stand over there so I can't get up. And then I run to the other side. And the audience is crying because they know it's totally real. It wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't set up. And, and now, meanwhile, the shit that made it really funny, to, especially to my friends, is like at that time, I was like a young kung fu master. It was like I was studying, you know, you know, Lawhorn Kung, kung Fu and Hungar Kung Fu, and I was like down. I was, and like, meanwhile, now I'm running across the stage like a total chump. I am terror. <laughs> And uh, the, the audience at the Apollo, as y'all know, they were like, yeah, when I finally come back. And Screamin' Jay like, just nailed the performance that night. And at that point, the old school guys in the band just decided, let's teach this young blood what it's all about. And uh, that was my first day. <laughs> <laughs>